given to me For all the blessings that I cannot see Thank you, Lord Thank you, Lord With a grateful heart With a song of praise With an outstretched arm will bless your name and thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. darkness and gave me your light. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You took my sin and my shame. You took my sickness and healed all my pain.
in the Lord. Alright? As it are you. And it says, God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore will not be fair. Though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof grow and be troubled, Though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right her. The heathen rage, the kingdom will move. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolation he hath made in the earth. He maketh the wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in our heavenly earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Bow your heads as we get to our time of prayer. Heavenly Father, we just want to give you thanks. We give you praise, O oh God, for blessing us with yet another day. We thank you, God, for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. We thank you, God, for you are Jehovah Jireh, and you will always be our provider. We thank you, God, for the, the bread of life which you have breathed into our nostrils, O oh God, whereby we, O oh God, can come into your sanctuary this morning to give you praise and to give you thanks. You said as we enter that we should enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. And you said, if we fail to praise you, God, you will raise up the stones, O God, to do such. And I'm very sure that none of us in here this morning would rather stones be raised up in our stead. So, God, we are here to worship and to give you thanks and to give you praise. You said, O God, as we come, you see your word said that we should come unto thee that all your labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. If you are sick this morning, you can come unto Jesus. If you need a job, you can come unto Jesus. Whatever you are going through this morning, you can come unto Jesus. Because his word says to cast all your cares upon him. Because he cared for you. Oh Lord, we just want to bless you this morning. We give you thanks. We give you praise for you are good and your mercies endure forever. I bring this morning's worship into your, into your presence this morning, God. I bring it in the name of Jesus. That you would bless the worship team. Bless the worship leaders of God that they may sing, O God, to give you honor and to your glory. Even for the worship, even for the, the musicians of God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would continue to anoint them, O God, anoint us, that we may continue to display skillfully to enhance the worship portion of this service this morning. I pray, O God, in the name of Jesus, for those who came in here broken hearted. I pray, O God, in the name of Jesus, that they may not leave the same way that they came in. And when it is all said and done, they will say that it was, they were glad that we come into the house of the Lord. Bless each and every one of us here this morning and continue to pour out your spirit upon us as we assemble here to give you praise, to give you thanks, and to give you glory. In no other name but in the name of Jesus, with thanksgiving. I now welcome the worship team. Thank you. 
opportunity to praise the Lord this morning. We are alive and well this morning in the house of the Lord. And let us continue to praise the Lord. Help us, Lord, to cry out to the Lion of Judah this morning. Hallelujah.
As we continue this morning's worship, as much as the worship is important, as much as the preach word is important, giving is also important. Because without the giving, the work of the Lord here on earth will not be able to continue. So let us all stand as we ask a blessing on the, the offering this morning. Heavenly Father, we just want to give you thanks. We thank you once again for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. We thank you, God, for you are Jehovah Jireh. Oh, thank you for being our sole provider. Oh, God, you would have provided us with life, health, and strength. You would have provided us with jobs that we can go out and work. And at this point in time, even now, oh God, we are about to give back a portion of what you would have blessed us with. I ask and pray in the name of Jesus that you would bless the offering, oh God, that would be given to you today. Oh God, bless the hands that stretch forth to give, oh God. Even for those who do not have to give, I pray, oh God, a blessing upon them also too. If there is lack of job, I pray that you would provide. Whatever it is, oh God, I pray that you would meet them at their point of their needs, even now, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And this offering, oh God, that is collected this morning and may it be used, oh God, to extend your work here on earth. Even now, I pray, and I ask a blessing upon it, even now, in no other name, but in the name of Jesus. Thank you.
we will bless him at all times. On a road marked with suffering, we will bless the Lord. Though there's pain in the offering, we will bless the Lord. We choose to bless his name. You gave and you take away. You gave and you take away. But my heart will choose to say, bless give him a worship. Just tell him who he is this morning. Hallelujah. God all by yourself. 
angels to be silent. So we're going to sing it again. Let your praise go up for who you are. Who you are. Lord, I bless your name. I bless your name. For who you are. Who you are. I worship you, Jesus. I worship you. You are God. You are God of to sing it again. Sing for who you are. Who you are. I bless you, Jesus. I bless your name. For who you are. Who you are. Supremacy belongs to you. I worship you. For you are God above yourself. You are him this morning. Let's give him a worship in the sanctuary this morning. God, we worship you. Open your mouth and tell Jesus something this morning. Because of who you are, we give you praise. Everything around us is changing, but Jesus remains the same. Everything around us is changing this morning, but one thing we are confident about one thing we are sure about this morning is that he is God and he remains God and he's the same yesterday it's the same God today and we are confident tomorrow he's gonna be the same God somebody worship your God this morning somebody worship Jehovah this We give the enemy no airtime. We then not come to think about what Satan is doing. We come to give our God a worship this morning. Hallelujah to a faithful God. Hallelujah to a faithful God this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you, O God. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord God, for you are God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself. Sing for you are God all by yourself. For you are God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. And this morning, oh God, we say, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done this morning on earth as it is in heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. bless your name for who you are I worship you you are God all by yourself you are God all by yourself let's show appreciation for the worship team hallelujah we bless you Once again, just want to welcome everyone who are worshiping with us this morning. I want to welcome back some of the visitors from the shelter. Just wave your hands. We're glad to have you here. Are there any first time vis visitors with us this morning? If you're visiting with us for the very first time, let me see your hand. Praise it. Do you mind standing and share your name with us?
And where are you coming from? Glad to have you here. Glad to have you. All right, glad to have you. Well, we're glad to have all of you here this morning, and we know why you are here. So, and I hope that you all enjoy the worship this morning, and you will come again. Thank you. God bless every one of us. Overland is in the house. Glad to have you here. We do appreciate you coming and worshiping with us this morning. And for the birthdays and anniversaries, we'll leave that after the service. At this point in time, we're going to welcome you, our speaker. He's no stranger to us. He's our assistant pastor, none other than Minister Darren Samuel. Blessed good morning to you all. And it's such a privilege to be worshiping in the house of God this morning. God is a good God. <laughs> we did not know that we would be here this morning. But God is a God full of compassion. And he is a God full of mercy. And so we have the privilege to enter into the house of God and of our sacrifice of praise unto him. Hallelujah. Let me welcome you to stand at this time as we turn to our reading for this morning. And I believe this morning that God is speaking because I know that Brother Garrick didn't look on my notes. But the scripture that he read from this morning is the exact scripture that I'm going to be preaching on this morning. Psalm 46, verse 1 to 3. And I want us all, as we go into the word of God this morning, to make the same declaration. It says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear? Do the earth be removed? Do the mountains be gathered into the midst of the sea? Do the waters thereof roar and be troubled? Do the mountains shake with the swelling thereof? Sailor, Lord, we come to you this morning, creator of the universe. You hold everything in your hands. You are in control of it all. And so we put our trust in you because you are mighty God. Lord God, as we are about to enter into your words this morning, I pray, oh God, that your words will find root in our hearts. And so that, oh God, it will build our confidence in you. Lord, I thank you for your words, which guides and edifies and lead us into the right path. I say, let your will be done this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. It's so good to be here this morning, and I see some of our brethren from the Chateau Belair New Testament Church who are not really strangers to me because I would have visited them a couple times. And there are good brethren down there, 
And I want to greet you, my wife and I, uh, Daniel, Richard, Samuel. I want to greet you all and welcome to Lomans Hill. And as all pastors here would say, it's the best place to be. These are rough days. <laughs> These are overwhelming days. It's one trouble to the next. It is one disaster to the next. Everything is happening so fast. But yet, the disasters seem to linger for a while. <laughs> for most, it is very hard to navigate our way around and finding strength to go on. We know of the issues affecting us. Beginning back in 2020, when the pandemic hit, some lost jobs. It was difficult to see how some will provide for their families, for churches. We were to limit our social gatherings. We cannot underestimate the damage limited social gathering does. Studies have shown that physical gathering have tremendous benefits for us, for our long-term health. When we meet and we greet, it enhances our health, funny enough. But it is true. While solitude is necessary, Long periods of isolation can lead to mental issues. And I've heard of personal or persons committing suicide, not here in St. Vincent, but in other places because of isolation. And even though we had the use of technology to keep us in contact, it was never the same and could ever be the same. Just as things were about to open back up, church, and eventually school, here comes La Soufre. The volcanic eruption displaced over 15,000 people and destroyed their livelihood, especially the farms. They no longer enjoy the comfort of their homes. Although I heard of some saying that shelter life is nice <laughs> when they talk about the food. But where I'm working, big men cry because they cannot take the pressure of the shelter life. They want to get up and work. But just to get up and do nothing, there is no farming, there is no fishing, there is no work for them to do. They are crumbling under this pressure. From where I'm working, some of the women went back to visit their homes. And the condition there, they were completely devastated by it. Many had to evacuate their homes from the orange and the red zone and move to the green zone. But late this week, we realized that the green zone is not even safe because the amount of rain that came on Thursday brought tremendous flooding in the green zone. Landslides in the green zone. Where can we go? Who can we run to? Where can 
can we find strength to go on? The only safe zone is in the Lord Jesus Christ. The psalmist stated that God is our refuge and our strength. A very present help in times of trouble. He is our refuge and our strength. Now, this psalm, it is a hymn of praise, which may have been written when the Assyrian army invaded the land and surrounded Jerusalem. Some of the darkest days in Israel when, war, when powerful armies came up against them to fight. The Assyrian army was one such army who invaded in the 14th year of King Hezekiah. This event occurred in 701 BC, four years after Sennacherib took up the kingdom in Assyria. To keep Assyria from attacking, the southern kingdom or the part of the southern part of Israel would pay tribute to Assyria. But when Sennacherib became king, Hezekiah stopped paying this money, hoping that Assyria would forget and they would ignore him. But Sennacherib retaliated. Hezekiah realized his mistake and he paid the tribute money to Assyria. But Sennacherib did not retreat. He attacked anyway. He sent his chief of staff with threatening words to Jerusalem. And this is what he was saying. What are you trusting in that makes you so confident? Do you think your words can substitute for military skill and strength? Perhaps you might say, we are trusting in the Lord. But isn't you the one who insulted the Lord Hezekiah? The chief of staff of Sennacherib continued. He said, when we put this city on the siege, your people will suffer. Your people will suffer with you. And they will be so hungry and thirsty that they will eat their own dung and drink their own urine. The chief of staff then spoke to the people in Jerusalem. He said, don't let King Hezekiah deceive you. He will never be able to rescue you from my power. Don't let him fool you into trusting the Lord. Don't let him mislead you by saying that the Lord will rescue us. Lies from the pit of hell. After hearing these threats, Hezekiah went to the Lord for help. He tore his clothes and went into the temple of the Lord and he prayed. God answered Hezekiah's prayer and he delivered Jerusalem. He delivered Jerusalem by sending an angel to attack the Assyrian camp. <laughs> Hezekiah didn't even have to lift a finger. When the surviving soldiers woke up in the next morning, they found corpses everywhere. Then Sennacherib broke camp and returned to his own land, shamefaced. The Bible stated that the Assyrian army did not even shot an arrow at Jerusalem. And it is out of these deliverances, the psalmist declared that God is our refuge and our strength. There may be some things that you are going through. And you may think that you have to fight your own battle. 
But I'm telling someone today that you may not even have to lift a finger. Because God is our refuge and our strength. God is our refuge. In other words, God is our protection. He is our defense. He is our safety. He is our security. But sadly enough, man have a tendency to trust in his own abilities and strength for protection. God has given man wisdom and he invents. And as time goes on, we have a tendency to put our trust in man because we see their great inventions. And sometimes we doubt what God can do. We doubt the miraculous at times. For the Assyrian army, they believe that because they have military might and skill that they will be victorious. But man's abilities and skills are limited. So we cannot depend on our own abilities and skills for protection. Yes, we may attend self-defense classes. We may go to the gym and increase our muscle power. Right, Daryl? We can install burglar bars into our homes. Or we can even have licensed firearm. But these cannot provide the protection that God provides. I once heard of a man who owned a licensed firearm. And he would frequent the firing range just to be comfortable using the firearm. The firearm was purchased to use for protection or defense in case someone breaks into his home. And I would say that nothing is wrong with have a licensed firearm, but these things can put our trust in them as our source of protection. But one day, a burglar broke into his home. And the burglar took things from his home and left. The firearm was of no use to the man. Because the man was at sleep. He was asleep. And it is by the mercies of God. Why that burglar didn't do him anything. I believe. So what kind of protection does God offer us? One, God's protection is unlimited. God's protection is unlimited. David declared in Psalm 18 and verse 2 that the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the strength of my salvation and my high tower. God's protection of his people is limitless and can take many forms. David characterized God's care and protection using five military symbols. God is like a rock. And when we think of rock, a rock is difficult to be moved. So God is like a rock. A rock that cannot be moved by anyone who would harm us. God is like a fortress. A place of safety where the enemy cannot follow and break in. God is like a shield that comes between us and the harm that tries to affect us. Whether it be our enemies whether it be weather systems, whether it be intruders, God will protect us. He is the strength of our salvation. He is like a stronghold high above our enemies. If we need protection to their friends, 
we must look to God. If you are not looking to God for our protection, then you're not in a safe place. Number two, God's protection is certain. In Luke chapter 21, 17 to 18, when Jesus was asked, what sign will there be when these things or the end of the age will come to pass? Jesus warned that in the coming persecutions, his followers will be hated by all men for allegiance to him. Christians of every age had to face this possibility. Now, if you think that the Christian life is all bed and roses, there's a suffering that we must face as well. We are enemies of the world. But Jesus declared, even if this be the case, not a hair on your head will perish. It is such a comfort to know that when you feel completely abandoned, that the Holy Spirit is with us. And I was saying that the Christian life is not a bed of roses all the, th all the time. There are times when we feel abandoned. Up to last week, I felt that way. I felt lonely and deserted. And I felt like giving up because of all the circumstances around us. And I felt like I couldn't do it anymore. And I felt like giving up. But when I kneel in prayer and went to the word of God, I feel a strength start to come back. So the Holy Spirit will comfort us. He will protect us. And he will give us the words we need when we feel abandoned. This assurance can give us the courage and the hope to stand firm for Christ. No matter how difficult the situation, his protection is certain. Just like the experience with the three Hebrew boys. God's protection is certain. And three, God's protection is for eternity. Huh. Not just here on earth. But he will protect us from eternal punishment. Continuing in Luke 21, verse 19, Jesus said, in your patience, you will possess your souls. Or in other words, by standing firm, you will win your souls. Jesus is not saying that believers will be exempt from physical harm or death during persecutions. And this may sound contradictory. But there is a deeper protection that is needed than just physical protection. And that is spiritual protection. Jesus was saying that if we endure to the end, his followers will not suffer spiritual or eternal loss. So what is more important to you? What is more important to you? God is our refuge. God is our strength. There will be times when we feel totally surrounded by trouble. Destruction and defeat is imminent. It becomes difficult seeing our way out and our strength becomes weak. Our ability, our energy, our power dwindles under the immense pressure of our circumstances. The Bible declares in Proverbs 24.10 that if you faint in the day of adversity, 
then your strength is small. If we fail under pressure, our strength is small. Therefore, one can have small strength. Have you ever had small strength before? I know I crumbled under pressure before. In times of trouble, small strength will cause us to faint and crumble under the pressure. But when we have small strength, remember the source. It is God that we draw our strength from. Funny enough, times of trouble can be useful. <laughs> they can show us who we really are. Times of trouble can show us what kind of correct character we have. It can show us where we need to develop. Times of trouble can help us to grow stronger. When Jeremiah questioned God because of the trouble he faced, God asked, how you could ever face the bigger challenges if the little challenges tire you out? So when we are faced with challenges, when we are faced with problems, when we are faced with trouble, let us not complain. And I remember Bishop Porter preaching on this same topic a couple weeks ago. The trouble we face today is training us to be strong for future difficult situations. God will see us through to the end. Instead of complaining, we can respond to our troubles like King Hezekiah did. King Hezekiah did not respond by seeking his own strength. King Hezekiah did not respond by seeking his own wisdom. King Hezekiah did not respond by seeking his own abilities. When Sennacherib came up to Jerusalem, he said, Who are you counting on? Are you counting on Egypt? If you lean on Egypt, it will be like a reed that passes your hand. Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, is unreliable. So King Hezekiah could not call the nations around him for help. He could have increased his army, but he did not do that. He could have added more chariots, but it may still have not been enough. King Hezekiah chose to respond by seeking God for help. He tore his clothes and put on sackcloth as a sign of mourning and went into the temple of God to pray. Thank God that the doors of the church are still open because there are some people who are going through some trouble and they want to enter into the house of God to pray. Like King Hezekiah. King Hezekiah's strength was insufficient. And he needed God's strength. In times of trouble, we must seek God's strength. We can depend on God as our source of strength. Even the strongest of people get tired at times. But God's power and God's strength, it never diminish, diminishes. He is never too busy. He is never too tired. He is never too busy. He is never too tired to listen to us and offer help. He is a very present help in times of trouble. Right there in the trouble. He can provide a way out. He is always ready to help. So when we feel all of life crushing on us, 
And when we cannot go another step, let us remember that we can call upon the name of the Lord to renew our strength. Isaiah 40 and 29 says, He gives strength to the weary and He increases the power of the weak. Isaiah 41 10 says, So do not fear, for I am with you. How much do we believe that God is with us? Even when He feels like He is not with us. As I went on, do not be dismayed, for I am your God. He will, I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand, says the Lord. Sometimes the devil comes with his lies, saying that you have rebelled against God. That you have sinned against God. So God will not help you. Lies from the pit of hell. God wants us to repent and turn to him. And when we do that, he will offer his help. If you remember the parable of the prodigal son, though he wasted his father's blessings and squandered it all on pleasures, he was welcomed with open arms when he found himself and went back to his father. Our father, the Lord God is full of mercy and compassion. And when we truly repent and turn to him, he will offer his help and save us. So no matter how great the trouble we are encouraged not to fear. And notice in our team scripture how great the trouble may be. Do the earth be removed. Wow. <laughs> Do the earth be removed. What a sight would it be to see mountains moving. Do the mountains be carried away into the midst of the sea. Do the waters roar and be troubled. Do the mountains shake. <laughs> have, you ever, have you ever experienced the mountains shaking? <laughs> have you ever experienced the mountains rumbling? That's no stranger thing to us. I was home right here in Four Mountain. I am hearing the rumbling of La Soufre. In my home, I thought it was a big truck passing in the yard. But then when I got in the house and I saw on Facebook the, the plumes going up into the air, I realized that it was the eruption going on. So do, do these things be removed? Speaking of earthquakes and tsunamis and volcanic eruptions, do these things may happen, we will not fare. <laughs> we will not fare. Brother Garrick, would you fare? Well, I, I, I wasn't fearful at the time when the eruption was going on because I always say that I want to experience volcanic eruption. Can't let those persons in 1979 experience it, and I never experienced it in my time. So I wanted to experience it. But as the days go on and the ash began to fall, and the place became silent and eerie, there was some cause for concern. I don't want to say I was frightened, but there was some cause for concern. The feelings of fear will be there. The feelings of fear will be there, yes. But we do not dwell and act 
upon those feelings of fear. We run to God who is our source of strength. And we run out, the, out of the red zone too, okay? We run out of the red zone too. But we run to God who is the source of our strength. The fear of mountains or cities suddenly crumbling into the sea as a result of an earthquake or a nuclear blast or a volcanic eruption haunts many people today. But the psalmist or the writer in Psalm says that even if the world to end, we need not fear. In the face of utter destruction, in the face of death, the writer expressed confidence in God's ability to save him. I always say, death could come at any time. I don't think I will be afraid of dying. And this is the confidence Christians have. Sometimes, yes, the fear will come. But I, I really and truly, I don't care if death comes to me. And sometimes I think my thinking is selfish at times. Because why would I say that? And I have persons who would miss, you know? But as Christians, we can face death with confidence. Because we know that God will protect us from eternal destruction. Persons who are not Christians find it difficult when they approach that time. Why? Why? If we lay our treasures up our hair on earth, we will find it difficult. To put our confidence in God. So it may seem impossible to consider the end of the world without becoming consumed by fear. But the Bible is clear God is our refuge even in the midst of total destruction. He is not merely a temporary retreat. He is our eternal refuge. And he can provide the strength we need in any circumstances that we face. You know, some persons are sitting right here with us this morning. And they are going through a time of trouble. But I want you to declare in your heart and with your lips that God is my refuge and my strength. A very present help in time of trouble. Hallelujah. Let us put our hands together for God this morning. Please let me invite you to stand as we sing this song, You Are My Strength. When I am weak, I'll ask the worship team to come and assist me at this time. Declare it with confidence this morning. That you, oh God, are my strength when I am weak. Hallelujah. You are my strength when I am Hallelujah. weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You, you are, are my only in all. When I call 
And I want to offer you this opportunity this morning that if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, here is an opportunity where you can say yes to him. We cannot lay up treasures here on earth because they are temporary. The vehicles broke down. The houses get damaged. Our health deteriorates. But if we declare that God is our refuge and our strength, he will protect us in the day trouble. He will protect us in the day of judgment. For there will be a day of judgment for all of us. And 
if you are outside of Christ, you will not be protected from eternal damnation. So here is an opportunity. We have witnesses standing here. Those who did it before. And none of them will give you a bad report. That it was the worst decision they have ever made. It is always the best decision in life. So I want to give someone the opportunity. If you are a sinner and you want to give your life to Christ this morning, why not come to this altar this morning? Why not come boldly before the throne of grace to obtain forgiveness? I am not going to ask you to put up your hand. I am not going to ask you to speak to me after. I want you to be bold and come forward. For if you deny Christ now, in judgment, he will deny you. So why not make that decision this morning? If there is one who would say yes to Jesus, all of us here would rejoice with you. Even the angels in heaven will rejoice. So why not say yes to Jesus? Is there one? Is there one? Hallelujah. Let us pray. Dear God, I thank you for your words this morning. Lord, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice that you strengthen them on the inner man. Whatever trouble they are going through, help them to feel your love. Help them to find strength in you, Lord. As they would have cried out to you, O oh God, I know that you will hear their cry. And answer their prayer. Lord, I thank you for what you are going to do. Let your will be done. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may have a seat. I now turn over to Bishop, our senior pastor, who would come and greet us this morning. God bless you. Good morning, church. Uh, good morning, church. Let's show God some appreciation for what he has done this morning. And also, let's appreciate our assistant pastor, Pastor Samuel. We are about to do or or partake of the Lord's Supper. And I'm going to do something a little different. Not not much different. I'm just going to read the word of God. But I'm reading from the message translation. The text is 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Usually we'll do chapter 11. And we might slip over into chapter 13 as well. From verse 12. 1 Corinthians 12. From verse 12. As we prepare our hearts partake of the Lord's Supper. You can easily enough see how this kind of thing works by looking no further than your own body. Your body has many parts, limbs, organs, cells. 
But no matter how many parts you can name, you're still one body. It is exactly the same thing with Christ. By means of his one spirit, we all said goodbye to our partial and piecemeal lives. We each used to independently call our own shots. But then we entered into a large and integrated life in which he has the final say in everything. This is what we proclaim in the word, an action when we were baptized. Each of us is now a part of his resurrected body, refreshed and sustained at one fountain, his spirit, where we all come to drink. The old labels we once used to identify ourselves, labels like Jew or Greek, slave or free, are no longer useful. We need something larger, more comprehensive. I want you to think about how all this makes you more significant, not less. A body isn't just a single part blown up into something huge. It's all the different but similar parts arranged and functioning together. If the foot said, I am not elegant like hand, embellished with rings, I guess I don't belong to this body. Would that make it so? If air said, I'm not beautiful like the eye, limpid and expressive, I don't deserve a place on the head, would you want to remove it from the body? If the body was all eye, how could it hear? If all air, how could it smell? As it is, we see that God has carefully placed each part of the body right where he wanted it. But I also want you to think about how this keeps, you signi your, keeps your significance from getting blown up into self-importance. For no matter how significant you are, it is only because of what you are part of. An enormous eye or a gigantic hand wouldn't be a body, but a monster. What we have is one body with many parts, each its proper size and in its proper place. No part is important on its own. Can you imagine the eye telling the hand, get lost, I don't need you? Or the head telling the foot, you're fired, your job has been phased out. As a matter of fact, in practice, it works the other way. The lower the part, the more basic and therefore necessary. You can live without an eye for instance, but not without a stomach. When it's a part of your own body you are concerned with, it makes no difference whether the part is visible or clothed, higher or lowered. You give it dignity and honor just as it is without comparisons. If anything, you have more concern for the lower parts than the higher parts. If you have to choose, wouldn't you prefer good digestion than a full body of hair? The way God designed our bodies, I'm at verse 25. The way God designed our bodies is a model for understanding our lives together as a church. Every part dependent on every other part. And the parts we mention 
and the parts we don't. The parts we see and the parts we don't. If one part hurts, every other part is involved in the hurt and in the healing. If one part flourishes, every other part enters into the exuberance. You are Christ's body. That's who you are. You must never forget this. Only as you accept your part of that body does your part mean anything. You're familiar with some of the parts that God has formed in his body, which is his body. Apostles, prophets, teachers, miracle workers, healers, helpers, organizers, those who pray in tongues. But it's obvious by now, isn't it, that Christ's body is a complete body and not a gigantic unidimensional part. It's not all apostle, not all prophet. Not all miracle worker. Not all healer. Not all prayer in tongues. Not all interpreter of tongues. And yet, some of you keep competing for so-called important parts. But now, I want to lay out a far better way for you. If I speak, I'm in verse 14. Uh, chapter 14, sorry. If I speak with human eloquence and angelic, angelic ecstasy, but don't love, I am nothing but the creaking of a rusty gate. If I speak God's word with power, revealing all his mysteries and making everything plain as day, and if I have faith, that says to a mountain, jump, and it jumps. But I don't have love. I'm nothing. If I give everything I own to the poor and even go to the stake to be burned as a martyr, but I don't love, I've gotten nowhere. So no matter what I say, what I believe, what I do, I am bankrupt without love. Love never gives up. Love cares more for others than for self. Love don't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut. Doesn't have a swell head. Doesn't force itself on others. Isn't always me first. Doesn't fly off the handle. Doesn't keep score of the sins of others. Doesn't revel when others grovel. Take pleasure in the flowering of truth. Puts up with anything. Trusts God always. Always looks for the best. Never looks back. But keeps going to the end. Love never dies. Inspired speech will be over someday. Praying in tongues will end. Understanding will reach its limit. We know only a portion of the truth. And what we say about God is always incomplete. But when the complete arrives, our incompletes will be cancelled. When I was an infant... At my mother's breast, I goggled and cooed like any infant. When I grew up, I left those infant ways for good. We don't yet see things clearly. We're squinting in a fog, peering through a mist. But it won't be long before the weather clears and the sun shines bright. We'll see it all then. See it all as clearly as God sees us. Knowing him directly just as he knows us. But for right now, until that completeness, 
we have three things to do. Sorry, we have three things to do to lead us towards that com consummation. Trust steadfastly in God. Hope unswervingly. Love extravagantly. And the best of the three is love. That is the reading of God's word. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you. Oh, that our hearts are prepared to accept your word and to apply it to our lives. Thank you for bringing us to be part of your body. Thank you, Lord, for placing us where you have placed us. Oh, that we would fulfill our roles as you have destined. As we are about to partake of these emblems representing the body of Christ that was broken for us. I pray for each one present here right now. And perhaps there might be those on Facebook who are joining us, partaking of these emblems. I pray right now, Lord, that we'll be one with you. That our hearts will be filled with love. And that we would say we are yours. To be used wherever and however you want to use us. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. The night when he was betrayed, he took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it and he said, this is my body which is broken for you. Do it often, but remember me when you're doing it. Let's eat remembering the broken body of the Lord Jesus Christ. He took the cup. He said, this cup represents the New Testament in my blood. It's the new covenant. Thank you for this new covenant, Lord. No man was able to keep the old one saving you. Thank you for grace, Lord. Thank you for grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's drink remembering the blood of Christ which paid for all our sins. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Lead us heavenly Father lead us Oh, the world tempestuous sea. Back from the top again. 
with me through all my mess I've come to one conclusion you are the best hallelujah stand 
listening to walking. Hallelujah. I will sing. You are great. Almighty. All honor to you, all King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to all King. Sing hallelujah. I will sing. You are great. Almighty, Almighty, all on the Lord, to you, you are great, you are great, all on the Lord, all on to you, Lord, you are great. thank you Lord we thank you if it had not been for you Lord on our side you reminded us today that you are our refuge and strength a very present help in times of trouble Every troubled heart right now, Lord, let your peace, let your peace, let your peace reign. Every troubled heart, let the peace of the Lord just reign. Every lie. That Satan speaks into our minds. We renounce them right now. In the name of Jesus. That the peace of the Lord would reign. Hallelujah. For it's all about you, Lord. It's all about you. You reign, you reign, you reign, you reign, Lord. You reign, you reign. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Somebody needs deliverance. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Softly, 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 softly. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, that mind that is tormented. The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. The blood, the blood. The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Yes, yes. Nothing too hard for the blood to do. Hey, healing, 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 Lord. That washes white as snow. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, hey, let your love rush through the heart, oh God. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! It shall never lose its power. 
I cover every family. As we go through these unprecedented times, I cover every family with the blood of Christ right now. Every home where there is war, we speak for peace right now. Where there is confusion, we speak for peace right now. Not human type of peace, but the peace which passes all understanding. The peace of Christ. Lord, we give you thanks. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Has the Lord spoken to you this morning? No one? I really hope he did. Bible study will continue this Wednesday at 6.30. 6.30 Wednesday. We will continue our study on knowing your enemy. And this Wednesday, the, the subject is going to be preparing for deliverance. How to prepare for deliverance. We would, I will meet here and I will also have Zoom available for those who prefer to be on Zoom and those who prefer to be here, you can join me here at 6.30 for Bible study. Our church will be used to house the grades 5 and 6 of the Lowman's Leeward Anglican School. Um, the Ministry of Education is trying to bring the grades 5 and 6, I hope I have it right, the grades 5 and 6 back into the classroom. But as you know, most, if not all, of the schools are used currently as shelters. And so they've asked us, for their assistance, and we were, well, I was very happy to help. Um, I don't have a date as yet when it will begin, but um, I would inform you accordingly. Now, when that starts, I will move Bible study totally on Zoom because we're going to shift the chairs and the ministry has assured me they'll bring in their own furniture. All right? So we'll move Bible study and prayer back on Zoom totally. Um, but we'll have service on a Sunday here. Amen? Amen. We continue to work with the shelter below us, the Lomans Leeward Anglican School shelter. Um, it's not the only shelter that we've worked with, but that's the one that we've been working with mainly. All right, um, the ladies, some of the ladies are preparing Sunday lunch for that shelter today. Um, and from conversations with the shelter personnel and with some of the persons in the shelter, they are very, very grateful for what we would have been doing and we will strive to continue to do. All right, you did notice I did not ask anyone, any of you, to bring anything, to give any money other than what you usually would do. And so, and I don't intend to ask you either, but God has been providing. I know some of you have people in your homes who would have moved and it obviously is a, a greater financial burden than when you are with your family only. If you have persons in your home and you need any assistance, please speak to me or to Brother De Silva or to Sister Joan Brown 
or, well, I can't even list out all the names. Speak to somebody and make sure they get their information on, all right? Because we, we, we are also helping persons who, are in, who have people in their homes and need some assistance, all right? We continue also to provide the monthly food packages to the individuals who we have been doing so for over a year plus now, um, since COVID started. And we will continue to do that. There are some things I'm working on to make it bigger and better. It's not fully there yet. So when it's fully there, I'll make an announcement. Amen? Because at this time, I know it's hard for so many persons. I know it is difficult. I want to thank all of you who have been working tirelessly, really working hard with the response to the shelter and with all the other stuff that has been happening. We now have two water tanks installed. Um, God has graced, graciously blessed us with both of them. Together, they only come to about a thousand gallons of water, so they're not that big. All right? But it's very important that we have water storage so that we can continue to do the cooking and so on and so forth. Amen? The soup kitchen started back. We were renovating the kitchen, or I should say building the kitchen. It was more than a renovation. It's not fully completed yet, but... This, we started cooking for those that we were cooking for all the years um, from Wednesday gone. I'm not sure if I forgot anything else, but if I do, I will post it in the chat, in the church chat. God bless you. I will now turn back over to our moderator, Brother Garrick. Has he done a good job so far? It seems so. by our speaker this morning that God is our refuge and in him we will find strength no matter the situation that we are going through no matter the storms that we are facing whether it's dengue whether it's COVID whether it's the volcano whether it's the flood we can always find comfort in the Lord and in him his protection is unlimited his protection is is certain, and most definitely, his protection is infinite. So we know that we can always put our trust in the Lord, and in the local term, we say that we know that he has our back. Amen. All right? I do remember one thing I apologize. Sunday school at 5 p.m. Christian education, 5 p.m. this evening on Zoom. They, they usually is posted in the church chat the link. All right, so get your children together. Let them be a part of Christian education. It's important that they are taught the word of God. God bless. Amen. Is there anyone among us celebrating birthday for the past week or the upcoming week? Any birthday celebrations or anniversaries? No one. How about life? Well, I know we all are celebrating life today. Just one more announcement before we go. As Bishop would have mentioned that the soup kitchen has reopened back from the ladies who normally cook on Wednesday. And as you going out, there is a contribution box there that we normally take donation to aid in that venture. So if there is anything that you have that you don't need to take back with you, you can just drop it in that box and the ladies in the kitchen would be very grateful for that. Stand with me as we dismiss. Raise your right hands. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace, both now and forevermore. And we all say, Amen. Bible says it's a good thing to give thanks to the Lord. Amen. Praise the 
Lion.com. I come before you today, and there's just one thing that I want to say. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all you've given to me, for all the blessings that I can. your name. Thank you.